Do not attempt the training techniques you are about to see without consulting a professional. Tonight on Caesar 911, Caesar must tackle a major problem. This NFL hopeful has a ferocious Rottweiler that's playing by his own rules. Shadow actually attacked two dogs. It was going to be a massacre. One more attack can threaten the owner's entire future. I could lose my scholarships, my whole football career could just end. And then, Caesar rides up to a Doberman Pinscher that wants to attack anything on wheels. What I saw was pretty bad. Bauer actually bit my brother while he's riding his bicycle. Caesar Milan is called to the rescue by friends, family, and neighbors whose lives have been turned upside down by dogs in crisis. <laughs> Using everything in his arsenal, Caesar is answering the call. I'm getting tense just by watching this. You never know where Caesar will show up next. <laughs> On Caesar 911. Caesar's first 911 call is to East Los Angeles, a neighborhood known for being tough and unforgiving. East LA reminds me about where I started. Everybody speaks Spanish. The music that is played, the smells that are there, it just feels like home. Caesar was called to these rough streets by community college football coach Steven, who's concerned that his star player's ferocious Rottweiler is placing his future at risk. Hey, how you doing? How are you, man? Good, good. How about yourself? Very young coach, man. A little Gee, bit. Yeah. My name is Steven. I am a head coach and also offensive line coach at California Community College. Attaboy, Danny. Good job, Danny. So, what's going on? We have a case where uh, Steve, one of our better players, he's just very coveted by a lot of major colleges. He has a big, giant Rottweiler. <laughs> I'm definitely scared of Shadow. Shadow's a big, giant, black Rockweiler, a very mean dog. Uh, you know, Steve's 315 pounds, and he can't control it. I mean, it's just one of these dogs where enraged, you never know what it'll do. Everybody in the community will be so excited to yeah. see him at the next level. He represents. Yeah, exactly. The thing is, is that all this talent, all this work that he's put in can be all taken away by a, a simple fact that his dog could damage some property or even hurt somebody. And then he'll be held responsible. It does become there. a criminal act. Oh, exactly. And yeah. I mean, they've in cases where dogs will stick their head through the fence and he'll crush them. I mean, so he hurt all the dogs already. Yeah. This dog is dangerous. I'm just thankful the coach called me when he did. That's why we need your help here. All right, let's go find him. Coaches arrange for Caesar to meet Steve and Shadow. And when they arrive, Steve is already in trouble. Oh, there they are right there. What's up, guys? <laughs> Steve, you big as hell, man. You want me to give you a little hand, buddy? Yes, sir. Yeah? My name is Steven, and I'm Shadow's owner. I've seen some pretty bad things going up. Violence, gangs, killings, some things I wish I hadn't seen or heard. Throughout my middle school years, I found myself going through the wrong path. Then I found football. Coach and football practice kept me off the streets and out of trouble. I finally had some purpose in my life. Most of our neighbors' houses were broken into, and we knew that sooner or later it would happen to us. That's probably the main reason why we needed a big dog, and that's why we got Shadow. I got Shadow three years ago as a puppy. We had two other little dogs that tried eating his food and he started growling. And my sister put her hand in the way to stop him and he actually bit her hand and she started bleeding. I was in shock because he was a puppy. Like, I didn't expect that. The bigger Shadow got, it was worse and worse for us to try and socialize him with other dogs. I'm 6'5", 315 pounds, and it's even a hassle for me to walk Shadow. Especially once he sees another dog, his mindset is made. And is delay. Part of the culture is the reason why you have a dog is because it's going to protect you. You choose a really big dog, and you put him in the front yard, you tie him up. It represents don't come in. In reality, the dogs are going to build a lot of frustration. 
The worst thing that has ever happened is that Shadow actually attacked two dogs. Me and my sister were actually walking him in the park, and a dog came up running towards us without a leash, without owner, and Shadow picked him up with his mouth and started shaking him. He just picked him up like it was nothing. There was an incident where I woke up like around four in the morning. I look outside my window and Shadow has another dog. The dog put its head inside through my gate and Shadow just took advantage of that. He, he got him and he wasn't letting go. The worst thing I think can happen to Shadow is he'd kill a dog and then they take him from us and they'll probably put him down and that's definitely something I wouldn't want. I'm just lucky that no one pressed charges from the first two attacks and if it happens again, I can be held responsible. I could lose my scholarships, my whole football career could just end. That puts my whole future at risk. Whoa, whoa. You want me to give you a little hand, buddy? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yeah. He's agitated. Bring him over, bring him over. Here's the, the classic wire. <laughs> There's the wire. the wire. All right. Wow, look at this. Heavy-duty stuff, man. Steve was using the classic East LA cable and prong collar. A lot of people use this to control their big, powerful dogs, but it can have the opposite effect. If you use this stuff with tension, it can aggravate the dog, send him into a protective mode, and that can be very dangerous. Do we have any other leash for me? That's how Mexican I am, Steve. <laughs> we use ropes. That's very, uh, very powerful, but not as effective as a simple little rope. Here, Steve. Oh, are you sure? I thought Cesar was pretty crazy when he took off Shadow's leash and choke, and he put on that little rope. I mean, Shadow could snap that thing in a second. Yeah, that's that's pretty tight. You got a lot of tight things here. See, the tighter they are, they get tense. There you go. This is easier. Right here, buddy. After Caesar removes the cable leash and prong collar, it releases tension and Shadow calms down. Now, he teaches Steve the proper way to handle Shadow. Right, look. Football is all about formation. Yes, sir. Right? And then the coach, his job is to put you in the place where you are your best. Where he's at his best is right next to me. You always want bring him here. Right there. He's in formation. In front of me, too dangerous. When they're leading, you saw how we found you in the alley. <laughs> Caesar demonstrates how to keep Shadow calm even when walking past the German Shepherd. Look, just keep him right there. I'm gonna pass by. Let's go, buddy. Come on. So no tension, right? There, chill, relax in control. <laughs> it was so amazing to see Caesar do what he does. He walked Shadow past the German Shepherd. Like, he didn't react to him. It was just something that's never happened before. The way you hold on to a dog is really, it's not with a lot of tension. That's what makes him dangerous. I control with, look, three, three fingers, a hundred and something pound dog. Yeah. So that way you control the mind. If you control the mind, you control the body. You were trying to control the body, therefore you, you're not controlling the mind. You see it? Yeah. It's not the size. It's, 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 the, it's the understanding that gives you the leadership. Yeah? What do you, what you see different? Oh, you're working miracles here. <laughs> <laughs> I see this kind of aggression many times when people get this kind of dogs to protect them. Shadow has already built a lot of frustration from guarding the house. <laughs> Then Steve doesn't play the role of pack leader, which forces Shadow to take the leadership and makes him want to protect Steve. When Steve adds tension to the leech, it only makes matter worse. To develop a rehabilitation plan, Caesar wants to observe Steve on his daily walk through his neighborhood. Steve feels he isn't ready for the simple leash and opts for the wire leash and prong collar. So this is where you normally walk? Mm -hmm. And what's gonna happen? He starts getting real aggressive with the dogs in the house right there. He's already out of control, you know? Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Whoa. He was already out of control before he got there. 
It's like he forgot what I said about the dog next to you. Shadow was already in the front. I'm gonna kill those five little dogs. It was gonna be a massacre. <laughs> Caesar steps in to calm Shadow down. Let me help you. Let me help you. He changes the leash and snaps Shadow out of his aggression with a touch. The foot tap is a light touch. It's something that I use just to snap the brain out of it from an excited state to help him refocus. Then we have to wait until the dog calms down. <laughs> See, uh, he's going through the transition of, I'm not going to be in control, so therefore I should move away. But your problem be gone as soon as... See, when you walk a dog in front, you lost control. Now Caesar demonstrates leading Shadow calmly past the barking dogs. As soon as you're here, he needs to be right next to you. And then by the time you come here, look. So regardless how these guys are, my boy right here. Yes. This is crazy. Yeah, right? It was pretty unbelievable to see Caesar walk Shadow past all those dogs without him going crazy. It's something that has never happened before. See how he lowers the head? Yeah. So every time he lowers the head, that means he's becoming submissive. Now, with me? Yeah. Now Caesar wants Steve to walk Shadow past the barking dogs. He instructs him to keep Shadow behind him with a loose leash, or Shadow could become protective and attack. When Caesar told me to walk Shadow past those dogs, I was definitely scared. I walk past these dogs every day, and Shadow always tries to attack them. Caesar told me just to stay calm and cool. I'm just trying not to freak out. <laughs> Go ahead. Beautiful. Now, right there, you give him affection. For not reacting. That's right. I never thought I'd be able to walk Shadow past these dogs without him trying to kill him. But once I loosened the leash and had him walk behind me, it was unbelievable to see how easy it was. What is your personal goal for your life? I don't want my parents to work. They've been working their whole lives. Like, my, my dad, sometimes he doesn't even come home. He's just at work the whole time. I want them, for them to be proud of me and yeah. then for me to just have them retire right. and give them a place to live that right. is going to be their own. Steve is a great kid, and he has gone through a lot. I want him to achieve his goal, and I want him to be able to help his family. So if I can help him with Shadow, I will be contributing to his success, and that's the best part of my job. What's your goal for this guy? <laughs> Man, I just want, I want Shadow to be... A social dog. I, I haven't been able to walk him in the park because I'm just scared he's going to attack a dog. You want to see something cool? Yeah. All right, come on. Let me show you. Caesar has a surprise for Steve that's going to help him learn something new about Shadow. I would like to see my dog being friendly. So I said, man, I can do that right now. <laughs> I can show you the possibility. You're going to hook me up right here. Caesar has been working with Steve to gain control over his protective Rottweiler. Shadow has already attacked twice, and if he attacks again, Steve's future can be put in jeopardy. I can be held responsible. I could lose my scholarships. My whole football career could just end. Steve wants his dog to be social, but he won't let Shadow near other dogs because he is afraid there will be another attack. Caesar has a surprise for him. Look, he got scared. He got scared. Look, he got scared. Look at that. To prove to Steve that Shadow can be social, Caesar does the unimaginable. He brings the dangerous dog into his small RV, which is full of his personal pets. You stay behind, all right? Go, guys. Go, move. I didn't know he was going to take Shadow inside the RV. I was nervous because when he's been close to another dog, it wasn't good. Come on, dude. What I want to prove to Steve is the Shadow's aggression is him acting out of protection due to Steve's tension. When you are a commissar leader with Shadow, he's perfectly suited to socialize. It was shocking. It was beyond amazing just to see how quick Caesar got my dog to socialize. It's unbelievable. This is good. There you go. Mouth open is good, Steve. This is amazing. I told you, you want to see something? <laughs>
Shadow never got to really socialize. He never really got to share space, affection, sniffing another dog rear. You know, simple things. He never got to do that until today. Junior, let him smell you. Nice. Shadow has never played with another dog. And just to see him be so close to all those dogs, it was just amazing. So I just want you to see that he has absolutely what it takes to be social. I want to keep this momentum going, right? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you got that winning streak, yeah. and I, I want to invite you to the DPC, which we have more dogs. Mm -hmm. I want to teach you other activities, so that way you can challenge him more, and you can practice that at home. You did awesome. Thank you. Thank you. See you there. The Dog Psychology Center is a 43-acre ranch where Caesar conducts his training and research. Assisted by his staff and personal pack of up to 20 dogs, the DPC is the perfect place to work with Steve and Shadow. You brought your wire, Steve? Yeah, I'm still <laughs> trying to learn. How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? How you good, doing, good. Buddy? Shadow have no problem socializing with my dogs in the RV. Who I really have to work with is Steve. We need to challenge Steve to become a calm, assertive leader, and Shadow will follow. I think one thing would be really good for you is to practice something outside the box, you know? I have a llama named Lorenzo at the DPC. He can be a great training tool for Steve and Shadow. Is this the first time you meet a llama? Yeah. Steve has been so conditioned by his life and if delay that he carries that tension when he walks Shadow. Introducing him to the llama is kind of like my ch It's almost like stopping him out of the past so he can face his fears and focus on the future. First, Caesar shows Steve that Shadow can stay calm around the llama without attacking. You can learn a lot just by watching animals. Different species, you know, the llama doesn't know that's a Rottweiler. The llama doesn't know he can attack two dogs. What the llama knows is how he feels, the energy. In their world, that's who you are. What you are is energy. So if you're excited, you're nervous, you're tense, that's what you need to know. That's a good meeting. See the distance? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so now you go towards where the llama is. <laughs> Look at you, you're right here. Come on, see, you're big, you're big, man. I know, but it's a llama. <laughs> I don't see a llama every day, so I don't know in which way to approach it. Caesar told me, don't be tense. I mean, it's pretty hard when the llama's staring you down. If Steve has it in it to become confident and calm around the llama, he will have a much easier time not to be tense around Shadow. He's looking at me. Yeah, of course he's looking at you because you're calming. I hit people with practice, and that, but a llama, it's, that's weird. Come on, Steve, get in there. Wait, go inside? Yeah, you will. Oh. Yeah. Caesar points out how Steve's emotions directly affect Shadow. How are you feeling? I'm scared. That's right. How does your dog feel? <laughs> like he has to protect me? That's right. So that's why it will be really hard for you to guarantee the llama that he's safe. Mm. All right, come on, Steve. Just go close, uh, do it to the fence first. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, <laughs> this is easier than football. I mean, it took a long time for him to just move closer to the fence. There you go. See how, how the llama is very tentative with you? Yeah. But the llama is just picking up on your vibe. I think that was probably one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. Get closer, get closer. <laughs> there you go. Just face your fear. I told you, look, <laughs> he wants to mate with you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> just go in there. All right. These don't kick, right? Huh? They don't kick? No, no, no. All right, cool. No. The llama can tell that Steve is tentative and afraid. If Steve doesn't become calm and assertive, the llama will take over just like his dog. <laughs> just move towards him. Don't move away from him. There you go. Just move. You're moving away from him. Just move. You back him up. Back him up. Just move towards him like, like a football that? player. Just go towards him. Towards him, Steve. Towards. There you go. Just There you go. See? There you go. Claim space. There you go. See? You see how fear works? Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to bring your dog in. Now that Steve has shown Caesar that he can fight his fear and stay calm with the llama, Caesar wants to see him bring in Shadow. It's very important that Steve relaxes because Shadow can revert and attack. 
if Steve's powerful Rottweiler shadow continues to attack, Steve could be held responsible, jeopardizing his future. So Caesar has brought them from East Los Angeles to his dog psychology center to work on Steve's confidence with Lorenzo, a llama. Just go in there. They don't care. No, no, no. There you go. Just there you go. See, there you go. I think that was probably one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. See, there you go. And now we're gonna bring your dog in. Now that Steve has shown Caesar that he can fight his fear and stay calm with the llama, Caesar wants to see him bring in Shadow. Don't, don't think twice. Just go in it. Just walk. It's very important that Steve relaxes because if he walks his dog with tension, Shadow can revert and become protective and attack. Oh, there's the llama coming, buddy. There you go. Do I bring it close to the llama? Yeah. Grab the llama's muscle. You're gonna take him for a walk right now. Oh. You're gonna walk a llama and a Rottweiler at the same time. Caesar wants Steve to take Shadow and Lorenzo on a walk together. This is the ultimate challenge for Steve to overcome his fears and take control of two powerful animals at the same time. If he succeeds, he is on his way to becoming the calm, assertive leader Shadow needs. Just grab the muscle, yeah, grab, there you go. Grab here. There you go. I heard what Caesar said, and I don't want to be worried about Shadow, but it's hard to relax around another animal when I know what Shadow's been through. There you go. That's good, the block is good. You, you know block, the block is what you do. Yeah. At one point, Steve got really relaxed, and that's when I said, that is right there, buddy. That is the meaning of walking with Mother Nature. That, now Never. you're doing it. Now you're, can you feel it? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, now you are in a calm, assertive state. Welcome, my friend. Steve comes from a group of people, and in that team, they have a pack leader. That is him. So he understands the meaning of leadership. He understands the meaning of pack. The leader gives the direction. Well, I already know that he can be a good pack leader with his team, with his pack, but he needed to do the same thing with Shadow. After a long, challenging day, Shadow is rewarded with the opportunity to take his very first pack walk. Now we bring him into the pack so he can do his first pack walk in his life. Now it's time for Caesar to hand over the reins. There you go. Welcome to your first pack walk, buddy. <laughs> I'm really proud of Steve because he's going walking shadow full of tension with chain and cables to becoming this pack leader who is capable to walk shadow in any situation. Being the pack leader with these dogs is similar to being the leader in the football team because they feed off of your energy. If you're scared, then what does that show for the rest of the teammates? I hope you had a good time. Thank you for letting me teach you. Now, I want you to know that I'm gonna have some surveillance cameras in your house so we can see your progress and at the same time, where do, where do we need to focus a little bit more? So again, I'm, uh, we're not leaving you here. This is just the beginning. And uh, thank you so much for coming to the DPC. Thank you for help. I'm so thankful for Caesar's help. Now I don't have to be worried about shadow jeopardizing my future. Let's go. L look at him. That's a typical Roddy. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar uses surveillance and hidden cameras to monitor Steve's progress. Will Steve maintain his pack leader status and keep his football dreams alive? Or will Shadow take over and return to his protective ways and attack once again?